Hello, my name is Lori Sweeney. I'm an occupational therapist with Beaumont Health and Wellness Center. Today I've been asked to speak to you on Senior Independent Living, Essentials to Aging in Place. As an occupational therapist, my primary focus is on function, safety, and independence with basic activities of daily living. My attempts are to always enable a client to live life to their fullest by promoting health and wellness, as well as making recommendations for lifestyle changes and environmental changes within their home, again, to maintain their safety and independence. An occupational therapist's professional background includes a knowledge base in the human body system and disease process, standard medical procedures and precautions and pain management alternatives, as well as anatomy, kinesiology, which is the study of physical movement, neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, and their practical application to the physical, cognitive, and behavioral health of an individual. The philosophy of rehab is empowering patients to maintain their own health and commitment to healing through an individualized exercise and wellness program, a PRISM approach, looking at prevention, intervention, and sustaining wellness. Aging in place. Aging in place describes a person living in the residence of their choice with a focus on quality of life and independence. It's not about growing old, it's about being prepared for the changes in life, health, and in your environment that occur as you age. Discussion topics I will try and focus on today include activities of daily living, functional movement patterns, proper body mechanics, home safety, adaptive equipment, durable medical equipment, and energy conservation. Activities of daily living. With activities of daily living, an occupational therapist focuses on basic activities or instrumental activities of daily living. And these are the things that we do every day. We may take for granted when we feel healthy and able-bodied, but if things start changing, maybe our range of motion is limited, we lose um, muscle strength or sensation, even the smallest tasks are difficult to do. So when I talk about basic activities of daily living, those include bathing, dressing, grooming, personal hygiene, and functional mobility, moving from one place to another. Instrumental activities of daily living include more complex tasks that we routinely do to take care of ourselves or others. Here are just a few things um, that are limited to, that are not limited to, meal preparation and cleanup, grocery shopping, housework, vacuuming, mopping, sweeping, laundry, or yard work. When I see a client for the first time, my primary focus is on talking about proper posturing. I'm educating them in the spine, the normal curvatures of the spine. We have three normal curves, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. Maintaining these curves, maintaining these curves in neutral, avoid forward bending at the waist, and always encouraging the clients to look in at strengthening their stomach muscles or their core muscles and their leg muscles. Again, now proper posturing with sitting. The, the diagram on the left, I wanted to show you that again, the ears are over the shoulders, shoulders are over the hips, and now the feet are flat on the floor. There is a back support on the chair that I wanted to show you that you may need to actually use or have to maintain that lumbar spine. You also can, also, um, you also can roll up a towel and um, put that in the low part of your low back. Again, making a, your own lumbar roll, not necessarily having to purchase items. With standing posture, again, aligning your ears over your shoulders, hips, and ankles, having a wider base of support, and having a slight, be, uh, and having a slight bend in your knees to absorb some of the shock from standing and prolonged weight bearing. 
even with select sleeping postures, making sure that if you are a back sleeper, having a pillow underneath your knees, and if you're a side sleeper, having a pillow between your knees. Again, keeping your spine in more of a neutral uh, format as well as your hips and your knees. Functional mobility. Again, sometimes when we're feeling good, healthy, able-bodied, we take these things for granted. Just actually transferring from a chair or a couch or even climbing in and out of the car. But again, if we're not feeling well or if we have some uh, back pain, some hip and knee pain, we may compensate and use compensatory movements, placing ourselves at risk for an injury. So again, when we're, we're sitting down in a chair, what I'd like for you to do, again, get close to the chair, bend your hips and knees, and then lower yourself onto the front edge of the chair and then scoot back versus just plopping down on the chair. To get up, it's in reverse. Scoot to the front edge of the chair, and then if you have the armrests of the chair or just uh, use your leg muscles and push up on your legs to stand up to and stand up to an upright posture. With functional mobility, proper standing posture here, again, if you're working at the kitchen sink and you're chopping up some vegetables maybe for lunch or dinner, or you're washing a few glasses, open up the cabinet door underneath the sink and prop up your foot on the lower ledge. Maybe if you're grooming, you're in the bathroom, doing your hair, applying your makeup, or even shaving. Again, if you have a cabinet underneath that sink, open up the cabinet door and prop up your foot on the ledge. It takes the pressure off your spine as well as your hips and knees. Functional mobility, getting in and out of the car. Again, so many of us may climb into the car and climb out. Again, we may be putting ourselves at risk for an injury. So to keep you safe, what I'd like for you to do, once you open the car door, sit, sit down but face outward so your legs are actually facing outward, and then slowly rotate yourself, meaning your one leg in at a time. You can grab onto the steering wheel, the seat, the door frame, whatever you need to hopefully rotate as a unit. Do not try to twist. So again, your shoulders and your legs are moving as one unit. To get out of the car, it's in reverse. So holding onto the steering wheel, the seat pan, or the door frame. Again, rotate one leg out at a time. Again, and now you're facing outward, and then using those same surfaces to help yourself propel to a standing position. One trick that I like to tell clients to use is actually place a black garbage bag on the seat pan of your vehicle. And then that, that way, that will assist you with the rotation in and out of the vehicle, especially if you have cloth seats or if you if, or if you're wearing a coat or a jacket or some uh, um, some more bulkier clothing proper body mechanics again so many times I think of proper body mechanics with lifting carrying pushing pulling more instrumental activities of daily living but again we need to use good technique or good body mechanic principles with even the basic tasks points to keep in mind. If you question how much something weighs, please, that's something in the back of your mind saying maybe you shouldn't lift it. Get some help. Always uh, test the load. Uh, keep your back in its natural curvature. Hold objects close to you. Avoid holding the objects with your arms extended. That actually intensifies the forces on your hips, knees, and as well as your spine. Avoid twisting. Tighten your stomach muscles. And one way to do that is always be uh, bringing your belly button towards your spine. It's not holding your breath, it's just bringing the belly button towards the spine. You're actually engaging your core muscles. And avoid forward bending at the waist. This is a nice schematic to see um, how to handle weights, again, going from waist level to below waist level. We want to make sure that, again, we're keeping the weights close and then we're bending at the hips and knees and we're keeping that back straight, maintaining all the three curves of our spine. If we're having difficulty with obtaining items from the ground level because of a hip replacement or possibly a knee replacement or just a pain or, or a back injury, again, we may want to think about elevating the lifting surface. And what I mean by that is elevating the lifting surface, uh, maybe putting it on a box, a tote, maybe inverting buckets, pails, so you're not lifting at ground level. So by doing that, you're actually elevating the lifting surface anywhere from 16 to 24 inches off the ground. And that'll help you to avoid any risk factors and compensate with anything uh, at ground level. 
here's a picture of proper body mechanics uh, with regard to floor to waist lifting. Again, incorrect, just forward bending. Whatever that weight is, if that weight was five pounds, now if I'm lifting it incorrectly, we're actually multiplying that weight times 10. That's the amount of force on our spine. So an additional amount of 50 pounds of pressure, so to say, is on your spine, hips, and knees. So again, we want to make sure we get close to the load. We want to bend our hips and our knees, keeping our back as straight as we can. If you have the opportunity to move a cart that has wheels, always push versus pull. If you're pushing your lawnmower, the grocery cart, maybe you're pushing uh, your grandchildren in a stroller, get as close to the, the object and then use your legs to move the object, especially if you're on uneven terrain or if you're going on an incline. If you have a tendency of pulling the object, what that causes us to do is extend our arms and then forward bend. Again, putting some risk factors on ourselves. With reaching overhead, a common mistake we do is just keep our feet together and reach overhead. But by doing that, we're actually putting more force on our spine and hips. So what I'd like for you to do is if you could actually stagger your stance, meaning one foot forward, one foot back, and then reach up to uh, obtain items out of an upper level cabinet or to place items up there. Try not to reach overhead with your feet side by side. Another nice reach, and this is more uh, for reaching below waist level, is a golfer's reach. Again, golfers do this um, when, they're, when they're golfing after they're done putting, the short game. So they actually hold onto their putter, their golf club, and they kick one leg back and then they retrieve the ball out of the cup. This is a great reach for reaching below waist level. If you were loading or unloading your dishwasher, your washer or your dryer, or just picking something up off the ground, the one primary issue here is always making sure you have an upper extremity support to hold on to. So you need to hold on to a nearby surface. So if you were loading or unloading the dishwasher, hold on to the counter run or the washer and dryer, hold on one of, to one of those appliances. With proper body mechanics and vacuuming, so many times we may just stand in one place and let our arm do all the work where we're twisting and turning, trying to cover the surface area. How I advise my clients is hold the vacuum close to your side, but step back and forth and move with the vacuum rather than using repetitive upper extremity movements. Again, if you, when uh, vacuuming underneath a chair or a table, again, one foot forward, one foot back, and lunge back and forth versus is just using your arm. With sweeping, trying to avoid overreaching with the broom. So many times, again, we're standing one spot and then we're bringing everything towards us. Why don't we use short strokes towards the body and then also a long handle dustpan? That's very helpful, avoiding the risk of forward bending at the waist to pick up the debris. I advise clients have a long handle dustpan in your home as well as outside because again, with any of the spring, fall cleanup or just basic yard work, we don't want those risk factors to be uh, a parent and then we're actually compensating and forward bending. With mopping, again, I advise clients maybe placing the mop bucket in the sink or on a chair. Again, avoid forward bending at the waist. There are now they have a lot of ergonomic mops that are made available to where the ringing mechanism is actually in the handle of the mop. Again, one foot forward, one foot back, step forward and backward to cover the surface area. Home safety. Well, I'm going to start at the entranceway. Remove any doormats or throw rugs. Clear the obstacles from the path. And please watch for thresholds that are not flush with the floor. Those are tripping hazards. So again, looking at maintaining your safety in and around your home. We want to make sure that you're not going to fall and then have a potential fracture or any broken bones or, or any broken bones. In the bathroom, please do not use towel bars or a soap dish as a grab bar. Those are not secure enough in case there is a fall in the bathroom. Place non-skid strips or a bath mat on the tub or the shower floor. If getting to the bathroom at night is difficult, please consider using a bedside commode or a urinal. In the living room and family room, Again, try to sit in chairs that are not too low, that don't have wheels, and that don't rock. 
Again, uh, area rugs should be backed with non-skid padding or they should re be removed totally just to reduce the risk of tripping and falling. In the kitchen, store frequently used items within reach. Obtain a cart that has wheels. If you have the room, that way the cart is made available so you can move the objects versus having to lift and carry them throughout your kitchen. Turn pot handles inward. That way there's no risk of hitting them accidentally and something spilling or burning you. Try using a timer, especially when you are out of the room. That way it's going to alert you, for, uh, alert you that something's still on the stovetop or, or in the oven. Install fire extinguishers. Other helpful hints include make sure your home has adequate lighting, night lights in the hallway, the bathroom, your bedroom, wherever you access. Keep the electrical cords out of the walking path. Please don't put a rug on top of the electrical cord. Clear them from the path totally. Keep a telephone within reach. Nowadays, when we, we have cell phones made readily available to us, we keep it in our pockets, maybe in our sweater, our house coat. Keep it readily available. Have the emergency numbers already pre-programmed. So again, to maintain your safety in case there is an accident. Install smoke detectors, change the batteries regularly, and place brightly colored strips at the edges of the stairs for contrast. This will help you when climbing up and down stairs to know the depth of the steps. So again, you do not trip while climbing stairs. And then please wear non-skid shoes in your home. As occupational therapists, we talk a lot about adaptive equipment. Adaptive equipment to increase ease and independence with ADLs. One piece of equipment that I strongly recommend clients to get is a long-handled reacher. A long-handled reacher, is, it extends our reach, so we aren't put at a risk factor of forward bending. They come in various lengths, 18 inch, 24 and 36 inch lengths. And again, picking something up off the ground, your keys, a remote, your eyeglasses, a piece of paper, whatever drops on the floor so you don't have to either forward bend or if you have difficulty squatting. Another piece of adaptive equipment includes a long-handled sponge. So many times when I ask a client how they bathe lower extremities, they're bending forward. Well, while we're in the, sh the shower or the tub compartment, again, you may be on a, a slippery surface. I don't want you to fall. So a long-handled sponge will assist you with, uh, with washing and bathing your lower extremities without having to, bay, uh, without having to bend forward. Uh, other pieces of equipment include other pieces of equipment for lower extremity dressing include either a sock aid or a long handled shoehorn. Those of you that may have had a hip replacement, a knee replacement, or have had some surgical intervention on their spine, an occupational therapist hopefully came to the room and at least educated you on the use of, of these pieces of equipment. The long the 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 sock aid, again, it's, it looks intimidating, but it's very easy to use. It's molded plastic. It has a long handle attached. You'll place the sock on the plastic piece and then drop that to the ground. And then with the handles, um, you're going to hold on to the handles and then insert your foot and then pull up on the handles. And then you're actually donning your socks. So you don't have to wait around for someone to actually don your socks for you or not do it at all or place yourself at risk by either bending forward or attempting to cross your legs where may that may be contraindicated with a hip or a knee replacement. And again, long handled shoehorns are very beneficial. So many times people will just wear us, uh, shoes without a back and that, again that may not be safe with with regard to ambulation so the long handled shoe horns also come in various lengths to assist you with donning your shoes. The main point to keep in mind with lower extremity dressing is avoid getting dressed while standing bent forward. Sit on the edge of a bed, a chair, and if you can, cross one leg over the other. But if you can't, the pieces of equipment that I just mentioned are very beneficial. Another piece of adaptive equipment I like to uh, instruct clients in is called a button hook. And sometimes as we age, we may have diminished sensation in our fingertips, limited range of motion, or just buttoning, zipping, or even tying are difficult with our coordination. So this button hook, it, it helps us button by, uh, we insert the hook through the buttonhole, attach the button, and then pull through the buttonhole, and you've actually buttoned a sweater or a jacket. Again, increasing your ease and independence with those tasks. 
some pieces of durable medical equipment. These are heavier pieces of equipment, basically, um, to keep us safe, more with mobility. Again, uh, there are several different slides. On, uh, there are several different pictures on the slide. The, there, uh, the grab rails around the commode, uh, some can be, uh, some can be mounted directly to the commode surface. Others are on the wall surface. Again, my one point being is that we make sure that uh, these have to be professionally installed by a contractor. Uh, again, do not use towel bars or soap dishes or the toilet paper dispenser because those will come free from the wall and then you will be at risk for falling. There are grab rails for the shower compartment or the bathtub. Other pieces of durable medical equipment include a tub bench or tub seat. Again, people don't think about uh, sitting while bathing, but this is actually a really safe uh, uh, activity uh, to do. Again, we're not standing, we're not on a slippery surface, we're, we're able to access our lower extremities. So a tub bench or a tub seat is very beneficial. There are also elevated toilet seats. An elevated toilet seat gives the your regular commode about four to five inches of, of, of lifting surface, basically, an elevation of an elevated surface. So again, it helps us with that sit to stand transfer and the the the, the and helps us with the sit to stand transfer. Other pieces of equipment that I've included include a bed rail that will help us with transferring uh, from uh, It'll help us with transferring in and out of bed. So if you're a back sleeper uh, side lying, you can have something to hold on to to actually propel yourself up to sit on the edge of the bed. Um, in that picture with the bed rail, I've actually um, have it pulled out somewhat just to show you that the bed rail actually goes right underneath the mattress, so it is secure. And then again, other pieces of equipment include a long-handled shower hose. That's pretty beneficial to have if you do have a tub seat or a tub bench, so then that way you're not having to get up and down uh, to to rinse off or bathe. Energy conservation. When I speak on energy conservation, I want you to conserve your energy through the day. So again, you're able to enjoy the things that you want to do. So again, if you can think about sit versus stand with performing activities, one of which being just meal preparation. If you're cutting up vegetables, peeling potatoes, why don't you try sitting at the kitchen table? Keep frequently used items within reach. That way you're not overreaching, you're not having to bend forward, so it's all within your reach level. Uh, if you consider shop by internet or phone, to have things delivered. Use the laws of physics. Uh, uh, use the laws of physics. Slide objects versus carrying them. Plan ahead, schedule breaks, ask for help, and manage fatigue. So many times people, they are tired when they're completing the tasks and then they're not able to do what they really want to do. So when you start feeling tired, please rest. Please sit down or lie down. Equipment providers for the adaptive equipment or the durable medical equipment include uh, Beaumont Hospital in Troy and Royal Oak, the, home medical, so, the Beaumont Home Medical Main Showroom and Sleep and Wellness Center. And there is a main number at the bottom of the slide and they, and they will route you to where the closest facility is to your home. And again, locations of the Beaumont Health System for Troy, Royal Oak, and Gross Point. This concludes my talk on Senior Independent Living, Essentials to Aging in Place. I hope it was beneficial for you, and I wish you well, health, and independence. Thank you.